how do you analyze what the other agents did and how do you create a strategy to get it done in so, those scenarios? Well, I always see a, a big disconnect and I talk about this with, with clients is that, <clears throat> especially in a luxury market, um, some agents, because of a price range, they're marketing the product as a luxury product when it's really not a luxury product, it's an expensive product, <laughs> right? <laughs> so so th th there's a big, so I always explain to the, to the client that look, my, my job is to align the consumer's expectation to what they see when they come through the front door. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the biggest disconnect I see with marketing. So, so you guys have to, if you don't use that, that's really good language, right? Yeah. And you just say that, I mean, that, that was, you said it, it really well. It's just aligning the consumer's expectation to what they see with the front door. So when I package up your marketing and we, and, and, and every property we come up with an individualized market with, because yeah. you, you can't like it advertise. Yeah. And one of my competitors does this, everything is the same description. Right, it's it's like it's crazy, you know. And so, so sometimes homes need a lot of work, but they happen to be worth three million, but they need a lot of work. So, you know, to me, I look at that as an opportunity. Is is that that to the consumer? That's a blank canvas, right? So let them know. Let them use very good marketing words that let them know that when they get in, they're going to spend some money, because when they walk into the luxury home that's so luxurious and great, and they're like, this thing is a total fixer, what the hell? Now they're pissed off and disappointed. Yeah. Right. So I have an awesome story. Um, we were in an appointment, home been listed 14, Pelican, uh, home's been listed 14 months. It started worth 12 and a half million, it was down to 9.9. .9. Andy, Andy and I walk in the door, I look at Andy, I'm like, hey, can you sell this? He goes, you don't have, he's like, just let me re relaunch it, it will be done in 30 days. And he tells the seller, you don't have to change the price. And I was like, dude, I, this is my friend. Can, can I say that? And 14 months, no offers, kept reducing the price, yeah. had been at 9.9 .9 for six months. Andy, Andy and Nikki took it over, relisted it, sold in 14 days. Yeah. At 9.9. At 9.9, yeah. awesome. right? I mean, it, it's ridiculous. So the seller calls me, he goes, are we really in escrow? And I mean, it's amazing, right? And so, but that confidence came from exactly, you were aligning, because people were seeing something else that was presented, and when they walked in the door, they, they saw something. There was no alignment between what the consumer saw. And that's what you picked up on right away. And you're like, yeah, I just have to relaunch this. Yeah, relaunch it and minimal cost. Probably spent a few thousand dollars bringing a stager, you know, switching some furniture around. And Changing different light different, different, yeah. different videos. And yeah, it, it caught a new buyer pool. Yeah. And with three offers in, in 14 days. Yeah. Just amazing. Amazing. Uh, question. Yeah. For your presentation, do you always do a one step or do you do a two step sometimes? I like to do the two-step. I try to go to the house, walk through it, build the rapport, and try to come back. It doesn't always work out that way. And again, depending on the personality uh, and, and their schedule, what their preference is, I, I can't force it on them. So you have to be prepared for anything. So, did you pay for that staging? On that one, yeah, I, on that one I did. Usually I don't, but on, on a $10 million house, to spend a few, million, a few thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. I want the name of your stage. Right? Again, it wasn't, it wasn't a complete stage. It was a partial. It was, yeah. it was more of a fresh yeah. amount. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Re-merchandise. Yeah. 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 Question, Steven. How do either of you use PR to market property? <clears throat> or do you at all? Uh, Telus has always done a good job PR and yeah, my stuff. Um, do I personally? No. I mean, I... No. Has PR ever sold the property for you? Um, PR has helped me get more listings. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Wait. So just in terms of like, let's say a seller, the property is a million, but they want you know one hundred fifty thousand dollars over list price, and they don't have a super high motivation to say go with, you know, you don't want to list it too high, or else your home is going to sell for a lower price. So with the lower motivation, lower motivation seller who wants more money, what strategy do you have? I make a business decision. So sometimes I'll gracefully bow out. Um, and it's not an insulting thing. I just, you know, I'm, 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 I set it up very from the beginning that I under promise and I over deliver. And, and I'll just be honest. I'll just say, look, I, I don't want to promise you something that I can't do because it, I, I have to sleep at night. Uh, and I, I, I don't agree with the pricing. So if, if Joe Schmo wants to say that he can get you that price, you should absolutely list it with him. But give him 60 days. And after 60 days, have me come back out and I'll relaunch the property for you. So this is good, right? I think you and I did Peter and I Peter and I did this, right? We did something similar and um, there was there was a there was a seller that said that they wanted wanted significantly over because another agent said that they were gonna buy the listing, right? 
And so we said, hey, that's great. Go ahead and sign that listing agreement, but write in a clause in the listing agreement that if they ask for a price reduction, you automatically cancel the agreement. That's it, right? That's it. And so it, you instantly, they'll instantly go to that because they can't, right? And so you, you've got to find simple ways to hack, to hack out the people that buy the phone, yeah, that's that's and you have really to way. ask for that, right? Yeah. right. You, you, you can't, you can't nod your head and say, "Well, Sean just bought that listing at three hundred thousand over or three million over." I mean, that always works, right? Because <laughs> what happens when it doesn't sell? Do they reduce with the same agent? Right. So many times right. they right. say, right. "We want to change horses," yes. yeah. and then they reduce. Right. Yeah. So you're already giving them the script to do that. Right. It's like. Immediately, yeah. right? Well, you have, to, you have to smoke up. You got to keep them honest, right? Keep the other agent honest, yeah. and that's the only way to do it. Otherwise, it looks like you are, yeah. like you're the jerk, and you don't want to ever want to be the jerk in that situation. And, and this is a fine line question too, yeah. because you know, I mean, sometimes you, you, this is why you want to go really deep in the interview process, because you're not so motivated seller might be a very motivated seller, yeah. right? So I make decisions based off that too, and I'm, I'm very complimentary. Like, hey, listen, at the end of the day, this is your home, and I'm here to support you. And I'm here to put a marketing plan behind what your expectation is. Uh, but I don't want to promise you something that I can't deliver. Right? So if you want to try that price, I'm okay with it. But just realize in three weeks, four weeks, I'm going to come sit down with you and we might have to re readjust the price. And if you're not willing to do that, I may not be your guy. Yeah. Right? So I'm, it's everything I'm setting up from, yeah. from the get go. And a lot of times, listen, I take a lot of listings where I didn't think they were motivated and I get the call 60 days in because they're at their price. And they're like, we have to sell now. What do we do? Yeah, I, I think you just have to determine where you are in your business, what makes sense for your time. Obviously, being very honest up front will pay off in the long run. But I always go to the 30-day approach and then gauge and, and really become self-aware what you're going to do in that situation where say, we're going to try your price for 30 days. If it doesn't work, are you open to trying my price? And if they're not, then you have to make the business decision of, okay, am I going to sell this house and worth my time? Or can I leverage this to get other listings mm -hmm. or more business? Yeah. So that's the key, right? right. So if you if right. you know that you're getting a historical listing, you've got a couple, and we and Andy's like, listen, I, they're not going to take this is not going to sell for fourteen million dollars. I know it, but I'm going to do extreme yeah. listing leverage. I'm going to for the next sixty days, I'm going to use this as bait to get as many appointments, as much PR, as many conversations, whatever I could do. But you have to, but it has to be extremely intentional. <laughs> that you're using it, you know that is listing leverage, right? And so if that is especially for the ones that are significantly overpriced that you took and you made a business decision to take. Mm -hmm. But if you take it and don't actually do an intentional listing leverage, you're, you're shooting yourself in the foot. So let's not do that. There are a few more questions, go ahead. Yeah, I have one, it's kind of off track, but it's how these guys handle something. I, in my marketplace, I have an agent that keeps, I'll go into a listing appointment and then they'll call this guy and he always says, I'll always do it for 4% to beat anybody. And he's a high-end agent. And he does it because he's trying to take over the market. What's my conversation to that? I know, Brad, you mentioned we talk about net. But he gets it into their head that we're not, nobody's, but I, I just need some help here. I think sometimes a quick one-liner is, you know, if Bob's so quick to give away his own money, what do you think is going to happen? You've tried yeah. that. Yeah. But <laughs> what I did do, what I did do, no, what I did do, that's one thing that I did find is he overprices them as well. Yeah. I so I took the expired, yeah. I took all the, the, what do you call it, like the report from the MLS and said, look, they didn't sell. So now I start going in with that at the time of the listening party. So, uh, that's the only thing so I could think of. Yeah. At, at the beginning of the year, I actually, uh, I had like, it's just real life stuff. I, I, came down, I came down with the flu at the beginning of the year and I was pissed off and I was stuck at home for like a week or two and I'm, I'm not the kind of guy that likes to be yeah. stuck at home. So I used the time to study all my competition because I started having the same issue where one of my competitors was overpricing everything and he was discounting everything. Right. So I ran uh, my stats and I analyzed the five agents that work in my geographic marketplace. And what I found was is I got a 98% list to sell price ratio that I've got the least amount of days on market, that I've got the higher commission rate uh, based on what's being offered, right? right? Uh, and that uh, I sell 87% of the listings that I take. Uh, my, my biggest competitor who is discounting, um, he has a 94% list to sell price ratio. Wow. Out of all the agents that work the area, he's got the longest days on market. Um, he sells 
45% of his listings. Wow. Okay, so 55% of his listings don't sell. But I put this into a spreadsheet. Okay. And I did agent one, agent two. I did Brad Feldman, my stats, agent one, agent two, you don't agent use three, names, agent do four. You? Hold on. Okay. So that's what I did. And then I put on the bottom tab, I put stats with agent names. Oh. And so that was a different sheet with okay. the same stats. Right. So, I, and I wanted to test which one they would gravitate towards. And the funny thing is, uh, <laughs> the funny thing is I would, I would pull this out in this conversation and I would say, listen, you know, my, my, my tagline is higher standards, better results. And the reason that's my tagline is because I've always studied my own statistics. I want to be better than everyone else. And I want to give you the best results. So I said, I ran my stat, and I just tell the story just like I told you, right? I was sick at the beginning of the year, I was pissed because people love stories, okay? So always tell the story. And I ran these stats, and I couldn't believe what I found. And I said, but, you know, because I'm respectful to the agents that I compete against, I'm not going to give you their names, but they're like, but is that the names right there? I'm like, I'm like, yeah, but that's for my reference. So, 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 so I'll show it to you. So, yeah. so, so, but the funny thing is, they're like, well, I know who that agent is. I know who that is. I know who that is. Sometimes they were wrong, but I just let them go with it. But the best <laughs> line, in the world, but the best line in the world is that you know at the end I I could say, look, you could list with so and so, but you're giving yourself less than a fifty percent chance of being successful. Okay. If you go with me, you have an eighty-seven percent chance of being successful. And and I and then I tell them the story. And here's the homes I didn't sell. <coughs> Two of them are still on the market a year later. It's not a price issue, it's not a market issue, it's a home issue, right? Okay. So that's how you combat that. Because one of the problems I have with one, is some people, they all text. So, Steve, you, you guys are a big PR firm, from what I can tell from meeting Steve Larkin. I'm thinking that if we had more PR about that kind of stuff, about the stats of these agents in these areas, that's going to take it off the table. Am I correct or not? Oh, I, I think that I've learned a lot this morning. Yeah. So, <laughs> so okay. let's take it offline. I've been, I've been that's stuff. Let's take it um, offline. Right? I've, been I've been taking notes. Yeah, there's stuff here that's unbelievable. You guys are amazing. Yeah. Right, right. Thank you. Yeah, Peter, sorry. I, yeah. I, had, I had actually two questions. I wanted to kind of get more elaboration from Stephen. What does it mean by PR? Because it's something that's not, I mean, I know what PR is, right. but I don't know how it relates to. Um, Real estate and what it means to have PR to a property. You want, you want, should, I, should I tell the story? Especially to making the PR plan before you go in. Yeah. What? Make so it, I'll just yeah. I'll just give you a real life situation. So and I told this at one of our meetings when we did the road show last week. We had a listing that we um, that we took that was a really tough listing to sell. It had not been touched since 1969, and the um, the wife had just passed, and so the house was full of all the stuff laid out to so the estate sale and everything else, and so. Um, Two other competitors, including Barbara Corcoran, actually, she went on a listing presentation for it. Both told the seller worth ten million. I said fifteen, and the reason I said fifteen was the only apartment on Central Park with a view of the park, but it was a difficult apartment. So we had it as an off market for three weeks and not one bite from any brokers, nobody. It came up with a story for the apartment because the guy that built the building gave the apartment to his wife as their wedding present. Mm. Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got the New York Times to do a piece on it um, on a Friday, and on Monday morning, this woman walked in and she said, "My husband has had her coming by in a minute. We'd love to see the apartment." So, in the apartment, she's walking through. These two people walk in. They're both wearing hoodies. Takes the hoodie off, and it's Paul McCartney. Oh. Okay. Bid full ask for the apartment. Got approval in one week and closed. And everybody knew about the apartment for three weeks, and I'm sure their broker that they're working with knew about the apartment as well. But until they read the story with the ah, it didn't happen. Yeah. So you can't do that with every property, but I can tell you, you got to find a hook. And it doesn't have to be a great property to find the hook. So that's how we look at PR. Awesome. Can I ask Andy uh, another question? Yeah, go one more to Andy, and we're going to wrap up. The $9 million Newport Beach house. 9.9. 9.9. <laughs> <laughs> you took it over, same price. What specifically did you do differently but besides staging that somehow this house had been on the market for 14 months? It wasn't a mystery to people. So how all of a sudden did somebody or three people show up? We did 30 days of pre-marketing. Correct. So it didn't even hit the market. So we left it a little vague. Of course, we did the countdown timer. We heavily leveraged Facebook target marketing. Um, we marketed to the brokers. but. Aside from, you know, kind of re the, the house had a kind of a stale feel to it. 
Um, so again, we brought the stager in. I think that the photography that we did was, and I, I know everybody does great photography, but you know sometimes a home looks great during the day, it looks great at night, you do both. Um, and then we did a really cool video on it, and I got probably 30,000 views that were targeted um, nationwide. And you know, a foreigner ended up coming in that had a local broker and, and bought it. I, I, don't, I don't know if there's some sort of mag magic or if this buyer just didn't pay attention to the home before, because he was in the market three months ago, mm -hmm. uh, but never came through. And for whatever reason, the marketing that we did and what we changed uh, kind of opened up his eyes and he came through and purchased. Um, and, Andy, did you use a copywriter on that as well to redo the description for your flyers and things? Yes. I know my strengths. I know my weaknesses. I don't write copy. I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Andy uses a copywriter, and it is just amazing what you do. And he, well, the best part is he uses the copywriter and doesn't update what the copywriter wrote, which is what I do. Like, that's, the edit, that's the problem, right? right. It's a, you always get good product, then the agents kind of jump in and be like, and they edit. That's the copywriter, not what the property is. Exactly. So you continue writing your copy, right? That's okay. It's just that it's it's a different way of thinking about the world. That's all. The point is, nobody reads the copy, only the seller reads the copy. I do both. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, what Stephen was saying, yeah. the copywriter is creating the aha. Uh -huh. Correct. Right. Exactly right. right. That's, right. yeah. We, have, we will have some agents that will go with two listing presentations, one for the web and one for the for the seller. And say, here's what I'm doing for you that I know is gonna work in print, and everybody's gonna love reading all about the flowery stuff, and here's what I'm doing for digital, which is very, very little, because I want people to contact me and reach out. And so, some agents will go in and show that to sellers now and say, I know the difference in marketing, and this is why I'm gonna do it through different ways for you. Um, I wanna be respectful of time, I'd love to do, what was, was this helpful? Was this yeah. 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 To respect, to, to respect and, and be grateful to Andy and Brad, I'd love to do like, just to go around the room, uh, I'd love for you guys share like three to five takeaways that you thought were cool that you took away, and I think that'll be kind of a great testament to Andy and Brad. So who, who, who wants to share? Steven. New York City agents have a way too easy. They don't have to do it. <laughs> 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 Lots of preparation, which is great. Awesome. Yeah. All right, Michael. Um, I love the fact that your, your pre-qualifying yeah. is like, you're, they've already fallen in love with you before you even walk through the door. That's uh, Justin, get on that. <laughs> awesome. That's what keep going. Yeah. I like when you ask the um, the seller for where they're going to go and get that story from them because that's going to be a helpful selling point for your buyers. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Pat. Knowing your competition, Brad, that is just yeah. incredible. Knowing the data. Yeah. Yeah. The data. Yeah. 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 Awesome. So yeah. everybody gets it. Also, analyzing and knowing who the buyer is. So you can target your marketing and your pricing to that buyer. Mm -hmm. So you know if you're going to have negotiation coming up or not that's coming great. up. Yeah. That's so that was right. huge. Who's your buyer? Yeah. And your pricing strategy where you're talking millennials. Yeah. That's so good. Right. Uh, yeah. That whole script. Dude, I've, I've, I've heard that so many times. It's so boring now. <laughs> 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 Brandon. I think really all the check closes, right? Yeah. Like we all know to do it, but yeah. we probably don't as yeah. much as you should. You know, it's all Tony Robbins stuff, man. I was yeah. listening to Mastering Influence the whole way up there, and it's like check close, check close, check close, and they close, right? So. But uh, you, I mean, you study this because you saw, you saw like Brad, Brad does it just constantly, oh, yeah, it's right? Great. It's, so, it's natural. so natural. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Good job. Yeah. I'm just super grateful for the idea that you can actually dig out hidden motivations from the seller who on the outset might appear to be unmotivated. Find out where they want to go. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Couple more. Tron. Yeah. I like what you said about adding a clause into the listing. Yeah. If they yeah. ask for right. a price right. adjustment, yeah. that yeah. is automatically yeah. canceled. That's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. One more. Aligning the consumer's yeah. expectations. That's yeah. That's my favorite thing, right? That's the nuggets. Awesome. Hey, let's give it up for these guys. Thanks.